Hey, what is up friends? Joe again from Grindhouse Grotto. If you're tuned in tonight, you already know I'm going to be continuing my ongoing series entitled The Forgotten, Volume 1, Episode 4, where I'm going to be reviewing an absolutely bizarre slasher film, and that is 1982's The Forest. Uh, yeah, not a lot of people have heard of this film before. This pretty much fits the definition of a slasher oddity. This film is so freaking bizarre. I don't even know where to start with it. You've got a lot going on in this film that is not typical of a slasher film. You have you have the slasher elements, but you've also got cannibalism. You've got um, kind of like an exploitative edge with you know with the cannibalism. Um, you have a supernatural element in the form of ghosts. You know, there's this killer on the in, in the loose. He's you know hunting down campers and hikers in the woods taking these people that he killed back to his, his cave, so it's kind of like a hobo, and then cannibalizing them. And at the same time, he's being haunted by his family. Um, so his children are basically trying to warn the people on the woods that their dad is crazy, watch out for him, and that's pretty much the premise of this film. Uh, it's one of those films that you have to kind of see for yourself to kind of understand what's going on. It's just a really bizarre film, but I but I enjoy it. I just enjoy that it tries to do something different. Um, it can be kind of slow at times, so there's a lot of dialogue going on between the different characters. But I don't think it really ultimately fails the film. What I think fails the film on a whole is that it just tries to do too much. It's like they were super low budget, and so they didn't really have the money to get like a special effects guy, a makeup effects guy to come in, like Tom Savini type guy and to make these kills look really good. So that in order for them to kind of up the ante and make this a different film, they had to go to the route of, you know, bringing this supernatural element into here. I just don't understand how the supernatural element kind of fits in. I was reading up online about this film, and they said that basically uh, the guy that made this film, he was on a very small budget. He pretty much like had to sell his house in order to get this film made. And he ran out of money part way through, and the, the film was like pretty much 70 or 80 percent done. And then it kind of sat in the vaults for a while, and someone else came along and then kind of picked it up, um, and then finished up the film. And and to, to to pan out the time for this film to make it a full length film, they they inserted some like uh, flashback scenes, and then they had the whole supernatural element going on with this guy's kids kind of haunting him and the campers. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we got in this film. Let me go ahead and talk about this Blu-ray release from Code Red, and then I'll go ahead and read the synopsis, and it'll kind of make a little bit more sense. So this particular Blu-ray release came out in 2016. I saw this film for the first time, like, three or four years ago, and I thought it was a pretty decent film. I like it because it, it does something different. So I, I decided I was going to pick it up. I'm the type of person where I have to have every single slasher film known to man. That's just me. I, I just like um, I like the slasher subgenre, and so I'm always looking for something different that I haven't seen before. But yeah, I thought this was a pretty cool film, so I picked it up. Now, Code Red's infamous for basically uh, only making about a thousand copies of their films. They make just enough to be able to sell all their copies. You got to be online when these things go pre-order because they sell out pretty much instantly. They're very hard to get your hands on. So if you're gonna look for this thing. I was lucky. I had a, I, I searched for this film for months on end, and then eventually I found a seller on eBay that was selling it for about forty bucks. So you'll probably have to search for a while to find this thing. I don't think it goes for any more than forty to fifty dollars. So if you're willing to cough up that kind of money, um, it's not a bad film. It's definitely worth it if you're a completionist. Uh, if you're not willing to get this, you can find it on VHS and DVD. Um, you probably can find this on an upload. I'm not saying this is a good thing to do. But you probably can find it on YouTube. Hint, hint. Um, so anyways, this thing's got a brand new 2016 H-Teen scan. Commentary with Don Jones and Gary Kent. Commentary with Don Jones and Stuart Abjornson. A featurette and then an original trailer. And that's pretty much it. That's the extent that Code Red goes to... Uh, that's the kind of extent they go to in, into making their releases. They don't put too much work into it. They just want to pump out the movie on Blu-ray. That's pretty much it. Alright, so th I'll read the synopsis real quick. Two couples plan a trip into the forest, but they didn't count on the killer 
on the loose with a taste for human flesh. Haunted by the ghosts of his children, the killer is eventually double-crossed as the ghosts of his children come to the aid of the campers in this unique entry in this Killer in the Woods subgenre. From 70s exploitation director Don Jones, and he's known for Lethal Pursuit, School Girls in Chains, and then featuring cult star Gary Ken, who's known for Satan Sadist, Thrill, uh, Thrill Killers, and then Stafford Morgan of Legend of Bigfoot, and Corky Pigeon, TV's Silver Spoons. So I've never seen any of those before. Now see this slasher classic from a brand new HD scan. So pretty much what's going on is you have these two couples, um, two women and two men, and you know these girls kind of want to show up their boyfriends because they're like the, the city girls, and their boyfriends basically are like, you're, there's no way you're going to survive out in the woods uh, on your own. They're basically like, you know, teasing them. The girls are like, oh, we can do it, we can do it. So they, they decide they're going to go out in the woods and go camping by themselves for a night. And then the guys, the boyfriends, are going to come out a couple days later and meet up with them. So the girls go out and camping, and they learn pretty quickly that things are not, something's going on. There's a killer on the loose. So they're getting stalked by this killer, and eventually you get a long stretch on the middle film where it's like basically a dialogue between these two guys, and it's like kind of like some comedic relief because their car breaks down and there's little antics going on, but that's just kind of like filler to make this film full length. And so they eventually make it out into uh, the woods. And they don't know where the women are at. They see the car there, but they're like, okay, these women are nowhere to be found. Something has happened to them, but they don't know what happened. So they're trekking through the woods. Um, and they end up not finding the girls. So they end up holding up in the night in this cave. And that's where they meet the antagonist, the killer. But they don't know he's the killer. So they're in the they're in this cave and they're camping out and they're kind of sketched out by this weird guy who's like living in this cave. This guy has kind of like made the cave his home, so he's got like some makeshift furniture in there and stuff. He's got this big fire pit where he's roasting some meat, hint hint meat over the fire. And uh, these guys are like petrified to go to sleep, so they decide that or right, one guy's gonna stay awake while the other one sleeps and then they rotate. Well. While the one guy's asleep and the one guy's, you know, kind of keeping watch, the cannibal is like, hey, you know, you want some meat? You hungry? I just did a little bit of hunting today. So the guy takes him up in his offer and eats it, and it's kind of a weird scene where he's like, he knows there's something off about this food. He's like, it's almost like he feels like, you get the impression, like, he, he senses that it's his girlfriend. He doesn't know why, but he's like, He's eating it, and he's like, hmm, this is good, but then, he, then he, he gets this look in his eyes, and it's almost like he realizes by eating the girl that, by eating the meat, that it's his girlfriend. I'm telling you, this is a really bizarre movie. So, they're instantly, like, freaked out by this dude. They're like, okay, this guy, something's up with him. And then we get some scenes where, you know, they're kind of like, later on in the film... Uh, the, the guys, and then there's the one girl that survives. So one of the girls got picked off, and then the other girl's kind of like on the run. And they're being chased by this guy, the cannibal. And at the same time, you get this supernatural element going on where the kids and then the mother are kind of like haunting the campers. You get a little bit of a backstory, kind of what's going on with this guy, why he's kind of like a hobo living in the woods. Basically, his wife cheated on him. He caught his wife cheating. Uh, there's this really weird scene where when he catches his wife cheating, he chases the other guy outside and he keeps on, he's chasing him and he just keeps on popping up on the other guy. And it's like, how is this guy? What do you, I mean, what is he like? Freaking like uh, Michael Myers. He just pops up on people. I mean, it's, it's so weird and kind of funny. There's like this like little like wrestle going on between them and it's just really silly, really cheap and low budget. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much this film. Really bizarre, just weird, really weird things going on. But it's it's fun because it's just so cheesy and over the top. I love films like this. I don't know why, but I just find these films to be fascinating. They're like little hidden gems from our past. And uh, yeah, it's an enjoyable film. It's not for everyone. By all means, I'm not saying this is a good film. 
it's just one of those films I can't do it any justice by talking about it. You just have to see it. Just really weird. Um, yeah, would I recommend it? Probably not for most people. For your for your for you slasher completionists out there, I would say it's worth picking up. It's definitely something you've probably never seen before, and uh, it's just a cool film to have in your collection. But anyways, guys, that that is uh, my review of this movie. There's just really not much to say. Like I said, you have to kind of see this for yourself. I don't really want to spoil the, the ending to this movie because I don't like to really give up the entire plot, um, especially in this series that I'm doing because I want people to discover these films for themselves. So yeah, go ahead and check out 1982's The Forest. I don't think you'll be disappointed unless you're a, a real casual horror fan. Um... Yeah, those are my thoughts. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Drop me a comment in the comment section. Have you seen this film before? What do you think of The Forest? Is it really bizarre or is this something you've seen before? Um, if you're not got subscribed to my channel and you like my content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for future content. Alright guys, until next time, take it easy.